All right, so here's not one of the most exciting parts of MQSA, not that any of it's terribly exciting, and that is the mammographic audit. So I'll try and go through it fairly quickly, quickly and hopefully not too painfully. So what is the purpose of the audit? Well, first of all, it's a mandate as part of the MQSA. It is part of educating physicians by providing feedback to them about their callback rates and their false positive and false negative rates. It is part of quality control. And then it does lead into a um, some of the national outcomes and cost data involved with mammography. Um, and then uh, there are medical legal um, implications of this. If your institution has um, very poor audit results, uh, that may affect individual medical legal cases. So just to run through some of the um, regulations. So we track the false positives and the true um, positives for BIRAD 0, 4, and 5. Um, they request tracking of false negatives, um, but this is not mandatory as this data is extremely difficult to get hold of. If you think about it, um, we don't necessarily, uh, well, we know if uh, breast cancers present within our institution within one year of us having done a uh, negative mammogram, we don't necessarily know if they have been uh, diagnosed at a different institution. So the, the, these numbers are not um, very hard. We have to have a lead physician identified for oversight at every single mammographic center and audit has to be performed at least annually, if not more frequently. So for all BIRADs 0, 4 and 5, we have the reports of both the final pathology, if there is any, and the mammographic findings. So for zeros, obviously, they may not um, be final pathology. We, the rates of BIRADS 3 are recorded. And this is done for um, the facility as, uh, an, as a whole, but also for each interpreting physician. And each interpreting physician is given the results of their audit along with the results of the um, the facility as it as uh, um, the whole facility. So depending on how it's done at your institution, you may get the whole facility plus yours, or you may get anonymized results from the other physicians as well. If a physician is felt to be significantly outside of the standards for audit um, that we'll talk about in a minute or um, outside of other physicians at that facility, a corrective action has to be um, put in place. So audit consists of two different types of data. There is the raw data and then there is the derived data. Let's go through the raw data first of all. So this includes patient demographics, the age, whether they have any history of breast cancer or high risk lesions in the past, if they're on hormone replacement therapy. The other raw data includes the number of screening studies and whether these are their first time screenings or um, a repeat screening study and the number of diagnostic studies. The number of recalls, the BIRAD zeros, is recorded, and the number of biopsy recommendations from BIRADs 4 and 5, as well as the number of short-term follow-ups of BIRADs 3. Now, as part of the raw data, pathology results are recorded and have to be um, incorporated into the remainder of the patient's data. So these have to be obviously linked. So what are the results of the, bio the um, biopsy? Um, so we need to know the pathology tumor staging, the size, the nodal status, the histology, and the grade of the tumor. Now let's move on to the derived data that's included in the audit. So from the raw data, the following figures can be derived. The recall rate both overall as an institution and for individual physicians. The true positive rate, that is those patients who are diagnosed with breast cancer within one year of a BIRADS 4 or 5. And the true negative rate, which is no breast cancer diagnosis within one year of a BIRADS 1, 2 or 3. The definition of a false negative is a breast cancer diagnosis within one year of a BIRADS 1, 2, or 3. But as I said, this is difficult data to access. 
um, particularly depending on your population. Um, in many urban areas, patients may hop from uh, one mammographic center to another, making follow-up very difficult. However, all known false negative cases must be reviewed for cause under MQSA. Now, what about false positive data? There are effectively three different types of false positive data. False positive one or FP1 is when there is no breast cancer diagnosis within one year of a BIRADS 0, 4, or 5. FP, and obviously this is a much higher number because it includes that uh, BIRAD0 group. FP2 is there's no breast cancer diagnosis within one year of being given a BIRADS 4 or 5. And then FP3 is a biopsy which has benign findings within one year of a BIRADS 4 or 5, not re realizing that not all 4 or 5s go to biopsy. Um, MQSA says we must track all FP3s, although most centers also include FP1 and 2. There are various cancer detection rates that can be measured, and we'll talk about the goals in a minute. Um, but these are the percentage of stage 0, 1, or minimally invasive breast cancers which are detected. And this includes ones that are under 1 centimeter and DCIS. We also uh, monitor the percentage of node negative cancers detected, and these are divided into both prevalent and incident rates. Let's look now at the positive predictive values that can be calculated. So the PPV, PPV1 is the percentage of BIRADS 0, 3, 4, or 5 that result in a diagnosis of breast cancer. And these are those uh, designated codes that originate from the screening exam, not from the diagnostic exam, that's important to note. PPPV2 is the percentage of BIRADS 4 and 5 that result in a diagnosis of breast cancer. And generally speaking, these are the ones that we really end up paying attention to. This latter, PPV2, originates from the diagnostic exam. Now, there are some certain goals that we hope every uh, facility will achieve. And these are the national goals, that the recall rate aims to be under 10%. Um, that might change with more widespread um, introduction of tomosynthesis, but currently that is the figure. That the sensitivity of mammography is greater than 85%, with a specificity of greater than 90%. That PPPV1 is between 5 and 10 percent, and if you remember, that includes some of the screening mammography, and PPV2 is 25 to 40 percent, and those are originating as the BIRADS 4 and 5, uh, which are from the diagnostic mammograms. So we have some goals for our cancer detection rates from screening, and these are divided into prevalent screenings and incident screenings. So for uh, prevalence screenings, the first time screeners, we want to pick up six to 10 per thousand patient cancers per thousand patients screened. And for the repeat screeners, the instant screen, a lower number, two to four per thousand screened. For pathology, our goals are that the tumor, for tumor size, that greater than 50% are either stage zero or one, and that over 50% are minimal stage cancers, as we described before, i.e., under one centimeter or DCIS. We want for under 25% of screen detected node uh, cancers to be node positive. Note, you have to exclude here the patients who are presenting with palpable masses. Those are not screen detected. And that's really it. I know this is a little complicated, but these are the audit statistics that are looked at by the FDA every year from your institution. Thank you very much.